-hmm. It's Friday, July 12th. You've got Coach, you've got Goose, and you're entering the core, powered by Zocor Plus, the one crypto wallet to meet all your custody and trading needs. Learn more about Zocor Plus at zell.network. Goose, what is going on, man? Hey, Coach, I'm really excited for this episode because it's the first in a series of episodes where we interview either a developer or a team member or a community member for a project that we support in the Zellcore wallet. And today we are pleased to welcome Franklin Fitch, who is the head of marketing for the Beeksy Exchange. So why don't we go ahead and get right into it? Hey, Frank, how are you? Hey, guys, doing well. Well, welcome to The Core, and thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. I'm pretty excited to chat with you. Excellent. Well, we've got a lot of people from the Zell community listening in, and we're happy to announce that we have added the Beeksy token to the Zell Core wallet. So why don't we go ahead and uh, get to know you a little bit? Uh, maybe tell us a little bit about your background and how you got involved with the Beeksy project. Thing. So my name is Franklin Fitch, as was kind of uh, given earlier. I'm head of marketing at Beeksy. I uh, ended up kind of a winding path, I think, as many many people's path is to get into this industry. I was working in uh, market research consulting, form of online research, uh, and what what I kind of came across in that online research was the world of cryptocurrency. And who were trading it pretty actively, they said, "Hey, you should you know kind of go a little bit deeper down the rabbit hole," and and that's what I did. And through that job, I ended up moving out to Chicago. I uh, was going to a lot of meetups at the time, just getting more and more into the uh, field. And I met some really cool people here. The The nice thing about Chicago at that time was the crypto scene was really blowing up. It was it was huge. Uh, and at one of the meetups I went to, I actually ended up meeting our uh, CEO, Artok. And so the rest is history. I started working with him first in kind of an external capacity uh, as a consultant at that time. And then over time, he said, hey, you know, I think we need you in a full-time role. So I went ahead and joined the team and I've uh, been running the marketing department since then. That's pretty cool, man. That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, uh, Beeksy has kind of been a long time coming. I, I remember it uh, sometime last year and just first hearing about it and uh, recently mm -hmm. kind of showed as an exchange and showed as a token. So uh, just real quick, could you tell us a little bit about the Beeksy exchange and uh, what makes it differ from so many other exchanges? Right on. Yeah. So, uh, you know, the reason that it took uh, a long time to build BXB, about two years start to finish was we're not um, an out of box solution. We're not a we're not a copy paste of other exchanges, which um, very many exchanges are that are right. uh, leading the industry right now. And we're built in collaboration with a company called One Market Data. It has been servicing uh, legacy finance fintech clients for decades, uh, the likes of Credit Suisse. Uh, you know, uh, Federal Reserve, uh, you know, really big at Bloomberg, th you know, players of that that stature. And they've been providing uh, data analytics and, um, you know, data streaming solutions for them. Them as someone who could help take our exchange to the next level. I ground up with them. And what we came up with was a really special matching engine, which is the core of any exchange. And it's doing, uh, you know, well over 225,000 transactions per second per trading pair. Or with like NASDAQ. Um, and among the fastest exchanges of any type, crypto or not globally, that that engine allows us to do is have more advanced order types. So we have, you know, a, a slew of orders straight out of the gate that put us up there with like Bittrex in terms of ability of different order types. Other features on the exchange, we've got a couple other really unique things like profit loss calculators, uh, multiple wallets per currency. So there's a couple different things, you know, from like a tech and a feature perspective that set us apart. And then I think the other thing about BXC, we just try and approach business differently. Like we really want to get into the community, be a part of it. Uh, you guys have probably seen that, you know, you guys are members of our right. community. Um, and, you know, we, we want to be connected to people, uh, to the projects, to the people and make an impact on people. And I think that goes down to even the way that we approach listings, for example, like we're not, you know, charging listing fees like a lot of folks are. So, it, you know, we're trying to do business the right way. And that's the other thing that makes us unique. I would say that uh, the, the low listing fee is definitely going to set you apart uh, from other exchanges. Do you, do you feel any uh, pressure or pushback from other communities because of the low fee? I mean, it seems like all of the other 
mega exchanges, as it were, they have these exorbitant fees. Um, does that does that work negatively against Bixi because the fees are low? We're not charging fees. We can kind of ingratiate ourselves a little bit to the community, but there is a business impact to that too, which is the revenue stream for crypto projects. Uh, and we we are currently cut off from that stream. And it's not to say that integration of a coin has negligible but there is a cost associated with that. I'm in a position where, you know, we we actually end up paying money to list projects right now. We're not, you know, recouping value directly from the listing fees. So there's a there's a bit of a you know an economic challenge there. But I think it's it's the right thing to do over the long term. What we've discussed is probably, you know, in the future having some sort of program where there's you know, costs for certain things that we have um, baked into our system end up being covered by the project, but there's no additional tack on. So that's kind of the way that it, we, we've talked about doing things going forward. But at the beginning, we wanted to give, you know, all of the projects that, that were interested in us um, for some time now that opportunity to get on for free. The only reason I asked that question, and this is something that goes way back in time, there used to be... Um, if we go back to when Martha Stewart was really popular, she used to offer all kinds of different products. I mean, you still can get many products from Martha Stewart brand. But when they first started, there was essentially premium pricing being attached to the Martha Stewart brand. And, and I think we see that in the exchange world where you go, okay, to get on to Bittrex is a certain buy-in or to get on Binance is a certain buy-in. Um, so I think for small projects, obviously, it's a huge uh, stone wall you run into. You Nobody's going to be able to generate that amount of Bitcoin needed to get added to one of those major exchanges. And then you have the problem of uh, volume is an issue. If you don't have enough users, are going to be trading it. So uh, I, I just wonder if the uh, lack of, quote unquote, premium pricing was actually a negative in this sense. But what you're saying is that the project is community focused and community driven so providing more opportunities for coins rather than stonewalling them is what it seems to me bxc is all about yeah you 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 make an interesting point there um and i i don't think we'd ever really considered that uh but it, but it is a good point i mean what we've found is that a lot of them are are looking at listing are smaller but like you said they're not flush with a ton of bitcoin you know that yeah to them because they need you know developers are expensive and need to build community and, and there's a lot of other costs that go into launching a crypto project we're, we're no strangers to that so i think they they're happy when they finally come across bxc and they're like okay here's a legitimate trading platform you know acquired a lot of buzz and interest and as opposed to the last 10 exchanges we talked to they're not charging us you know five ten bitcoin or more or millions of dollars worth of of crypto in some cases. So I, I think there's, they're actually refreshed by that. Like they're, they're pleasantly surprised. Yeah. Um, because they're so fatigued from all the, all the premium they, they see uh, that they're actually kind of refreshed to, to see one that's not. I, I'm with you on that. I think it's kind of sad that it's gotten to a point where if a coin wants to get further recognition, they have nowhere else to go, but one of the quote unquote major exchanges and then you run into the same situation that small businesses run into when they want to make a name for themselves in the world. They've got to get a relationship with a big bank. You know what I mean? And it's a very similar model to what's been, I think, holding commerce back uh, and most certainly uh, holding projects back from actually being able to have more impact. I think there's a lot of good in the crypto space that if given the chance and the right opportunities, they, we're going to see some really cool developments in the coming years. Uh, so it's great to encourage that. Yeah, mm -hmm. I would agree with all the above. Yeah, it's, it's definitely refreshing to see, uh, just see opportunities and in, in doors open for, for projects to, to be listed on, uh, you know, exchange with extensive features like you guys have. Um, and, and just kind of following up with the unique features and, and kind of what makes you guys stand apart from an exchange standpoint, um, much like a few exchanges, you guys also have a token that's associated with it as well. Um, could you tell us a little bit about why 
uh, somebody that's trading on your exchange would benefit from, uh, you, you know, utilizing your token? For sure. Um, you know, we looked at the exchange, you know, different exchange models, and we really liked the tokenized model from the beginning. We look at our token as kind of like loyalty reward points and to be exchanged on an open market. And, you know, you think of like Starbucks rewards or the example I like to give is American Airlines miles, where, you know, the more of those that you accumulate, the better access you get, um, the better customer support you get because they know that you're a dedicated customer and have been for some time. Better uh, access to various features, things of that nature. So I think that's the way that we look at it structurally, like in terms of its functionality. In, in this case, uh, is used for you know, actually reduction of, of fees, uh, access yeah. to those different user levels that I alluded to. So you can get, you know, uh, silver, gold, platinum, diamond uh, user levels. And each of those comes with different perks, expand our feature set, you know, new, new features and, and new premium uh, tools to folks who are at a higher user level. Eventually you're looking at remittances, uh, you know, merchant e-commerce integrations. Uh, we already are, you know, exploring a lot of different ones like that. The, the scope of the token utility ideally continues to expand um, significantly over time, but that's the core set of things that we're going to be approaching um, is like integration and payments uh, with the token itself, you know, uh, continuing to expand utility on platform through access to tools, features, and growing that uh, that user level program. And then we're going to look at ways that we can give you additional ways we can give you discounts with the token. Yeah, that's, that's a pretty cool model, man. I think it's interesting, especially with the idea of like merchant tools. I really like this idea of sort of a, a, a tier, like a several or a multi-tiered approach to user level so that you would have your, your premium customer who's the one who is going to do day trading and take advantage of all kinds of other features like would you are you thinking like advanced technical analysis uh, trading view type features or yeah or uh, exactly that we i it's funny that we actually were just exchanging some emails with trading view uh today but you know expanded like trading view features you know when it comes down to charting and things like that um, yeah. But there's so much more. Like, so we're looking into you know tax ready reporting right now. That's something we've explored for quite some time. Nice. And so you know, offering like premium premium tax reports uh, for folks who you know are holders of tokens um, is a really interesting way to go. Things that we can do because I think we're looking at being a super feature rich exchange. When it comes down to it, um, you know, we don't want to have people having to pay for those necessarily holder of those loyalty points with those tokens um, that can kind of afford you that access. So 250,000 transactions per second per trade pair. That's correct. Fantastic. I don't, I don't know if there's any other exchange out there that has, that can claim those kind of speeds. I remember BitShares was going pretty fast, but uh, even the Binance Dex using Tendermint. Yeah, so they, I mean, a lot of ways that you see exchanges sell their numbers is they aggregate them all together. Oh, uh, yeah. All that is the number. So they'll add up all the transactions across their maximum threshold of pairs, and they'll give you some number in the millions. It's kind of a disingenuous number, though, right? Like, that's not actually... It's unrealistic. You know, the, the bottleneck is always the trading pair. Yeah. It has been, or it will be, that's just the way it is. We are um, optimizing you know, speeds at the trading pair level that are kind of ridiculous. And I think Indian stock exchange is like the fastest in the world. And then you've got your NASDAQs and stuff up there. Uh, but we're at that level of legacy fintech technology mutations that we've seen in the crypto space. Nice. As far as exchanges are concerned. You know, it's the irony is that you've got some like incredibly game changing technology in crypto and exchanges seem to be lagging behind, you know, uh, we, we saw that and we looked back at legacy markets and we said, well, they don't have a problem on the exchange level. Let's go to the leaders in that, that technology sphere, work with them, get a partnership and go from there. And that of course leads you to developing this technology that is superior to whatever else is out there available right now. Right. Yeah. And, and we've been fortunate to have the partnerships that we've had. Um, and come at you know come to 
we did and secure a deal that's exclusive. So, you know, no other crypto exchanges are able to work with uh, our client uh, one kick. So that's, that's blessed, you know, that's blessed us in terms of having technology that others can't really, can't really match right now. And so, um, in terms of what you mentioned earlier, you refer to how you're so community oriented and, you know, Zil Zilcor, that's that's us. I mean, we, we have over 150 assets in our wallet and we're all about community and, you know, trying to bring new assets over. Uh, could you talk to us a little bit about, you know, why, why you guys from your end and I know why we why we thought it was important from our end, but, you know, why you guys decided to kind of execute a relationship with us? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, well, it's two things. Um, for one, you guys seem to have a very similar value system. With who you are as people, the way you do business, the integratedness of what your, your offering is thing, which is that much more important is a bunch of people came knocking at our door saying, hey, you should check out what these guys are doing and you should, you should integrate with them. Uh, so it was a lot of really trusted members of our community uh, leaders of our community that were saying, hey, you know, we like what these guys are doing. Uh, this would be a really attractive integration. Um, you should you should talk to them and, and, you know, kind of pursue that relationship. So that was it. I think it was it was a couple things there um, that led us to, you know, want to work with you guys. Well, it's certainly welcome. And the more we can integrate together, I think the better. And it's one of those things that um, uh, Zelcor has been using this, this is, this is more like, mostly Daniel, our chief strategy officer who likes this little slogan, but Zelcor is fintech redefined. And the fact that you are borrowing from legacy fintech, you know, to make BXC the best exchange possible. Uh, I, I think we, we definitely share that value too, in the sense that, you know, we're taking crypto, we're, we're taking some of the uh, familiar ideas like username and password, easy storage and custody and ability to trade through the wallet, all of that kind of stuff, integrating that to make it a streamlined user experience. And I, I, I think that without a doubt, you know, we, we definitely kind of see eye to eye on those kind of ideas. Sure. Yeah. And I think, you know, when, when we were looking at designing BXC building, uh, you know, different aspects of the exchange, that was, it was all about the, the end user. And it was all about, you know, something that our CEO has said, which is very similar uh, to that quote you just gave, which is we wanted to bring a bunch of tools under one roof, things that we liked with different exchanges. And we're like, why don't, why aren't these all in one place? Working on fiat, which is a major piece of that, because I think once we have fiat and once we add, you know, additional order types and a couple of the other things that are on our to-do list, you're going to have a really compelling offering in an exchange where it's just so many things that you like about exchanges in general are, are now under one umbrella. And I feel like that's something that you guys are also embracing is that, that mindset. Yeah. Building it little by little day by day, month by month. And it, it's, it's happening. You're seeing it happen in not just uh, Zell and uh, of course, BC, what you're trying to do with Beeksy, but it's also in the space, more and more projects are focusing on this multi-tiered, thing where where it's a it's platforming uh for crypto but this is really uh for us at least i could tell you right now from the very beginning miles had this vision miles was the one who said we're going to make a platform that is going to allow for development with blockchain and so we're looking at dApps we're looking at building a node infrastructure all of those things and right now we're just greasing the rails mm -hmm. yeah well it's admirable what you guys are doing and I know from our end, it's not easy. Uh, ambitious vision, trying to bring things together under one roof, uh, you know, integrations, and do do business the right way, and, and you know, uh, expand is tough. You know, so appreciation yeah. for you guys and what you do. I mean, and what you talk of right there is the back end programming, like pure blockchain development kind of thing which is a challenge it's new technology we're all starting we're all it, still i think at ground zero with a lot of it and For sure. building out right now i mean we've got the the number one use case as somebody like andreas antonopoulos would say is it's a an exchange of value right a storage of value in a wallet that's the first application of bitcoin and blockchain but beyond that boy i mean you can already see how many different ways it went. Now, uh, you guys are based in the United States, right? 
we have an office in the United States. I think based is a tricky word, right? Because we're, we're not domiciled here. Um, obviously, there's different legal entities that comprise BC. You know, part of that includes operation uh, in the United States. Um, but yeah, we do have an office in downtown Chicago in the Board of Trade. And then we have uh, another office in Armenia, so all around the world, actually, that are contributors to BC in some way, shape, or form. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, obviously, I, I have to ask a question about, you know, if, if you have anything headquartered in the United States, obviously, you got to play by their rules. So, tell me about, you know, KYC and, uh, you know, know, know your customer kind of things. Uh, is that a requirement on, on Beeksy? And if so, uh, what are your thoughts about it? Why is it implemented? Right, yeah, uh, it is a requirement on Beeksy. Um, people in crypto are upset by KYC, but I don't think it has to be the, the boogeyman. You know, KYC has positive merits. What it's aimed at doing is preventing illegal activity uh, of a significant degree, like, you know, money laundering, uh, terrorist funding, things of that nature. But it's also it also forms a consistent identity system um, that can potentially aid disenfranchised groups around the world. Uh, you know, you look at uh, Africa, you look at places in Latin America, uh, you look at, you know, places in, in Europe even, where you know, identity systems aren't uh, clearly defined. They're, they're not, you know, maybe, a, let's just put it this way, a financial identity may not be available to, you know, I would say most of the world in a practical sense. KYC systems, and they, they help to finally create um, a regimented identity system uh, that hopefully can allow people to be included in uh, financial systems globally. I think that's part of the aim of what crypto, you know, uh, hopes to do anyway. Yeah. Really allow people access to financial systems. So, you know, there's a really good blog from our, our KYC provider is a company named Maddie. A CEO, Philippe, has a really, really good blog piece, which I'll share with you guys after this, that goes over, you know, why KYC can actually be a positive thing. And, uh, you know, it's, it's not a disingenuous blog. He, uh, he really, you can tell he means it. And reading it, it changed my opinion a lot on KYC. But the real reason that BC has KYC um, uh, primarily operating in the United States is just being compliant. You know, you need to have uh, knowledge of who's trading on your platform uh, so that you can have, you know, compliant reporting structures of data uh, should you get subpoenaed or whatever might come your way. Uh, that's just part of, you know, operating any exchange in the United States. Right. Um, so it's it's not just crypto, but that's that's par for the course in legacy markets. Uh, crypto, I think, just thought it could skip that step, and recent enforcement action has said, no, 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 you can't. <laughs> so we had it from day one because we were always counseled that that was the right thing to do. Um, yeah. So it's always been a part of what we do. Yeah, and we we support whatever is legitimate in whatever jurisdiction. We're we're kind of we're kind of global too, uh, but if we know we're trying to cater to United States market or North American market, then we also always want to support what is best. You know, don't take advantage of proxying or VPNs and stuff like this uh, to get around right. whatever the local laws are. And it's much the same with us. I mean, it's like, you know, you can you can push on the users to, to adhere to those best practices. And then in some cases, um, you have to put those systems in yourself and those things of, you know, advising best practices and then KYC was one that we, we just always were counseled that uh, that's that's something we got to fall back on. So uh, it's particularly because of what an exchange is and what an exchange does uh, that that's required. But it is for us, you know, so we in, in understanding that that was going to be something that we required the provider to make it as, as user friendly as possible, make sure the information is secure uh, to try and reduce the friction and the headache for the end user. And it goes back to that commitment to the user. So we, we saw this company, Maddie, that has a, a pretty much facial recognition AI-based system uh, that in the majority of cases, uh, and we're, we're improving the percentage every day, significant majority of cases is literally immediate. I mm -hmm. matching your face to your document, um, and then it's doing some additional checks, and then you're passed. And, and that's, you know, I don't know if you've had experiences with KYC at like Poloniex or some other exchanges where a year and a half later they would get a reply uh, a year and a half yeah <laughs> didn't reply at that point <laughs> just i think i think the moment passed you know 
but the headache of that and the frustration of that, we don't, we didn't want to have that. So we went with the best provider we could, uh, understanding that some people don't like KYC, but a necessary thing. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Oh, it's safety, security. So uh, just to put people at ease in case they're worried about uh, sending identification information uh, through the web and all that, uh, there's a, you know, your terms of service include uh, keeping all of the customer's information private and secure. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we um, continue to talk with Maddie too about, you know, just making sure practices are airtight for user data security. Um, and and yeah. that's something that's a huge priority. Yeah, because it wasn't that long ago we heard uh, of a, another major exchange that was hacked. And yes. they lost a ton of coins, but they also lost a lot of user data. And that that's something that I just don't think it, it should be tolerated in the space because it's it's personal data. Exactly. I mean, we see it happening with a lot of, you know, uh, legacy companies. Yeah. It's probably remember the target hacks, you know, there's a lot of different stuff. Facebook has had some well advertised compromises of user data. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it's becoming a really, really important issue for people. So, you know, we recognize that and we take those efforts to try and secure that data. Yeah, that's good. I mean, I think that the, 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 the crypto user today is very savvy on those kind of things, privacy issues, because I think most people who are coming to crypto, especially right now, are sort of switched on by a little bit of the maybe, you know, quote unquote censorship that's going on. I mean, I don't even need air quotes for that. Let's just say the censorship that is going on online, uh, not going to dime out any particular groups, but you know, it's out there. So they come to crypto with this idea of a non anonymity, because instead of putting out your name or your phone number or your address or your social security, you're putting out a Bitcoin address or a, a you know a transaction hash. Uh, and certainly in the case of Zelle, we have, of course, ZK Snarks for privacy transactions. You know, So that's the kind of thing I think that draws people in a little bit. Um, I'm very security conscious that way. So I, I don't want to you know bias this. Maybe coach, you know, I'll kind of bounce this off of you. How how do you feel about like privacy in these kind of situations? Yeah, man, I'm I'm uh, me and you kind of discussed <laughs> quite a bit there on Discord and just private chats. Uh, but we we share similar thoughts uh, in, in in regards to privacy and um, you know I, I deal a lot in privacy coins just because of that interest alone. But uh, it, you know I I do understand in terms of adoption that there does there is a level of uh, you know there's a level of kyc that has to that has to be done number one to be compliant number number two if we want to see this crypto thing really really you know gain traction that you know we do have to <laughs> meet halfway um with, with with maybe some governing bodies and in, in, in terms of uh you know protecting ourselves and, and them protecting their country and things like that. So, um, yeah, I, I totally get it. I totally understand KYC, but, you know, privacy for me is uh, most uh, important. We, I, I have kind of long seen there, there maybe being a split coming there where some folks really kind of um, pivot into the, into the privacy angle of things. And then as the markets themselves mature uh, and kind of go down that, that KYC path and that path of compliance, you, you probably have the development dark pools uh, to a greater extent of, you know, direct peer-to-peer -peer swaps, atomic swaps, whatever technology is, is being used. Right. True anonymity, you know. Uh, I think you look at anonymity and that's that's kind of different than privacy and security. Uh, and that's where I think the hammer falls. It's just like those three words you'd typically be a layperson. But when you get into this industry, you realize there's significant shades of difference between them. Right. I yeah. think where we're going to have to, you know, do, do more digging. Nice. Nice. Well, Frank, it's been really good to share this time with you about Beeksy. Uh, real quick, give us like maybe some of like your top coins that we could find on the Beeksy exchange and maybe, uh, you know, anything that you want to let us know about the project as we move forward over the, over the summertime, huh? Yeah. So, I mean, we've got a pretty extensive list of coins already on there. Uh, a lot of them are going to be, um, you know, added soon. If you go to our website, actually, uh, you know, easiest way to get there, support.bigc.com, um, to our support page tab called new listings. So you'll be able to see the upcoming listings there. 
a couple of really exciting listings in there too coming soon. Okay. Yeah. But I mean, certainly like from, from the top down, you know, we've got the Bitcoin pairs mostly include uh, Ethereum and Monero, Litecoin, Zcash, see basic attention token is there. Oh my, go and dash EOS is there. Neo is there. Ethereum classic. So some, some certain, certainly some heavy hitters, which are d definitely good to attract users for volume. Sure. Yeah. It's, it's a combination of those large to mid caps. And then some ones that uh, you may not have heard of, Aon, Box, come to mind, uh, that are doing some really interesting things, uh, whose teams we have met and you know, you know, feel good about what they're doing and the progress of their tech. So again, uh, we encourage people to come there. And if you don't know something, uh, you know, if it's outside of that group of uh, heavy hitters that you mentioned, Goose, you know, go, go do some research on it. It's probably there for a reason right. you want to be looking into. All right. Is there, is there a specific, uh, will you also go to that support channel to uh, discuss a uh, possible on-ramp for a particular project? Like where could people go if they're developers and they want to have their coin listed on Beaksy? So we've got a form on our website, Beaksy.com, uh, that you can fill out. That'll give you, um, you know, the opportunity to get that initial review by the team. If you're a community member and you just want to kind of, suggest something that we we keep on our radar we do have a channel called listing suggestions in our discord um so we we welcome community members to come in there and drop a line and say hey you know i feel really good about xyz project um i'd like you guys to take a look at it you know if we get enough kind of attention in there now we don't encourage spamming we will take note of the things that are left there but if we get enough attention uh around the project and listing suggestions we'll be you know we'll be certain to look into it well, Frank, uh, that sounds awesome, man. We will make sure to link everything that you kind of talked about here today into our uh, podcast notes, uh, BXC Token, BXC Exchange. Make sure to visit BXC.com to learn about their project. And that site is B-E-A-X-Y.com. And don't forget, you can store your BXC in your Zelle Core wallet. It is located under ERC20 tokens and uh, very easy to add. As always, make sure to visit zell.network for all things zell and until next time you've been inside the core powered by zell core plus